Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, Dr. Flores may join us um, after we get started, but it doesn't appear there's any public, so I don't think we have any public comment for agenda or non-agenda items. So we'll get moving right into the business items and the uh, action items, purchases, and donation. I know um, Mayor has some things you want to articulate in regards to those purchases, Mr. Ober. Sure, and uh, good afternoon, Mr. Ross and Ms. Schottke and Ms. Williams. Um, <clears throat> the purchasing agenda, uh, just a couple of things I want to point out. Um, in the first section under item one, particular the power school, uh, item three there, and this has been our ongoing conversion from our, what is now our, I think our, we're in our 19th year of the current system. And Mrs. Williams probably doesn't know about this, but <laughs> our business software, the legacy system, Mrs. Williams, it is, it is I think 19, 19 years old now, correct, 20? 19 or 20 years old, it hasn't been upgraded in about a dozen years, so about two years ago we embarked upon um, an upgrade. Uh, they've actually stopped supporting the current version, so we had to do it anyways. And the issue's been just has been not been money. Um, we cannot use bond dollars for application software ever, or sinking fund dollars for that matter. So we had to finance on our general, uh, our general funds, and it just took some time. When I first got here in 2014, we also needed to upgrade our student data system, which is, was also about, at that time, about 25 years old homegrown. So we did that first with Synergy, and then we've been embarked upon what is now um, a power school that actually had gone through a, an ownership change in the middle of all this, too, from Sun Guard to, to power schools. Anyways, that being said, we had an initial estimate, and this is to add to that estimate, um, and the big reason for it, I think there's a couple of reasons. One. Power schools underestimated the effort it probably was going to take. Well, not probably. It, it, it's taken to get this thing done. A lot of it has to do with the age of our of our system, the fact it hadn't been updated in so long. We also had some customizations done to the current software, particularly in the payroll area, which is one reason why we haven't uh, up we haven't uh, had a version upgrade for a number of years because when you customize like that, it makes it much more difficult to, to do regular upgrades. So going into this process, our one of our objectives was to utilize the system, if you will, out of the box as much as we can, and we will have achieved that. But it's just taken a lot more time uh, than we'd anticipated. Uh, some, of it's our, some of it's problems on our side, just, just getting people up to speed on things. Part of it is on the power school side. Anyways, having said that, we need some additional dollars. We just had, a, we've been having weekly calls. The new go live date now, and this, I'm gonna tell you right now, is not gonna change. Cause we're all tired of it, we just wanna get it done. But new go, go live date will be May 29th, is when the data migration will, will take effect. And then um, that'll take a week to 10 days before we get the system back. And then uh, power schools will be on site. Uh, hopefully, when we come back up live, that we'll have um, things will be in good shape. We are going to do a mock go live on May first. So, that, so the intent of that is to, is to be just like a go live. Uh, only we don't we don't lose our current system during this mock go live. But they'll, they'll do it just like a real go live, and hopefully, if there's any outstanding items that may still be out there that will be identified and there's my go live that we can address and then have it all set to go on, on May 29th. So um, I think these dollars should be sufficient to cover what we have left. Uh, after that, there's an annual maintenance fee that, that covers uh, future upgrades. Um, you'll see also number two there is is a license, if you will, up maintenance fee for the current year is about $120,000 a year approximately essentially perpetuity as, as it would continue to, continue to upgrade the system as they need it. But um, Mrs. Williams, our old system was a DOS-based system. If, if you remember about that, the blinking green lights, right? So uh, this will all be, a, a, if you will, a Windows-based system and much more functionality. Um, it'll allow us to, at least in the business office, there's a number of, 
applications we do off the system in an Excel spreadsheet is an example, which you lose some control over that. So this will allow us to do much more within the system itself and keep it all, all intact. And uh, it also integrates nicely with, with uh, Frontline, which is our system we use in our HR area for our substitute teachers and for also uh, HR record storage, if you will. So uh, it's also more easily integrated within other systems we may have, although we're trying to minimize the number of, of major systems we have operating within the system. So the two major ones will be the student data system, Synergy, and then SunGuard, which is the business office. So, and then uh, under the other area, there are a number of items that Mr. Johnson has requested. You may recall last fall, I reported we, we oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I actually Thank you. do have some questions sure. about our school. It looks like um, that there has been um, several increases um, with regards to this, and I'm just wondering about the long-term cost of this integration. Will we be anticipating these types of increases, um, um, I guess, rather continually with this particular company? I, it's um, from what I'm seeing here with the increase that's recommended, it's nearly double the yeah. initial cost. And so I'm kind of concerned about mm -hmm. that type of program that we didn't know going in that we would be literally looking at one cost and then now we're double what we were looking at. What is this gonna look like long-term? Yeah, no, what, once the implementation takes place at the May 29th that I talked about and we we're up and running, uh, then there's, there'll be, then the only ongoing cost will be the annual maintenance fee, and that covers any regular upgrades, and they'll, they usually will do one, at least one a year, in some cases a couple times a year. Um, and any help, it also includes help desks, so if there's some system issue we can't, and believe me, Craig and his colleague Janet are very good, our internal resources for this system. If there's things they can't figure out, then we have help desk access, which is also covered in, underneath the annual maintenance fee. So no, that that's the whole implementation package and it should be done with this last increase. In other words, I'm, I'm gonna suggest by June 30th, we're done. So going to the next fiscal year should just be maintenance fees. I see you say current. licensing fee here, but is that maintenance fee something different? No, it's, just, it's licensing okay. maintenance okay. fee, yeah, it's called, it's, yeah, so. And, um, if you could just um, let me know, what is the anticipated um, kind of life of this program that we're, you know, spending double on now? Well, if well, if we continue to to do the regular upgrades, then it's it'll it's <laughs> in perpetuity, yeah, okay. basically, because they uh, it, it, and in fact, it, interestingly, the as I said, it went through an ownership change. It started out as SunGuard when we engaged in this, or Power Schools. Power Schools actually is a competing student data system to our synergy. We actually, the district actually uh, piloted Power Schools a few years back in anticipation of a change. We really didn't really like it. So uh, this company now, Power Schools, is that's your only business is student data system for schools and now business software. For, so they're specialized. And because we haven't customized the new upgrade, what we're getting, the new upgrade, it'd be much easier for the new releases going forward to implement them unlike the current system I mentioned earlier where we've got so much customization within our payroll system that's made it very difficult which is why we've taken so long to, to do this so thank you sir yeah thank you and then just want to point out uh, as I mentioned mr. Johnson uh, last fall we we received about nine hundred thousand dollar a uh, school security grant from the state of Michigan administered through the state police, and this is uh, some initial expenditures under that particular grant, as you can see, uh, under uh, item or section two, support materials by and large. Um, and then uh, the bond project is the last uh, purchase of furniture for the city high renovation. In just about there. I think Ken will talk a little bit about that. We we'll talk about bond updates. So that's that's the major items on the purchasing agenda for this uh, this go round. All right. Thank you. Um, uh, yes, sir. I, I was just curious on uh, on yes. purchase of the 
uh, portable detectors, uh, x-ray machines, what schools are those targeted for? And how many of those units are we able to purchase for that amount? Just curious. Uh, I, I, I don't know, I'm not sure how many. I, to my knowledge, they're, they're targeted for, well, we primarily use them for outside events, primarily at the high schools, okay. you know, basketball games and events like that. Are there portable okay. units on it? Yeah, portable okay. units. Okay. Yep. Thank you. That, yep. that explains yep. it. And just a quick question on the lock sets. Is that all schools yeah. that are getting those? No? no. Okay. Mr. Oh, Johnson no. says no. This is, oh, I know you're back there. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Johnson. I'll step up here and Thank you. clarify. Thank you. Yeah, after the first question, the uh, metal detectors are all portable uh, walkthroughs that are utilized at high priority or uh, high visibility uh, athletic events, and we use them random, unannounced uh, at uh, various weapons checks throughout the uh, district, but nothing is stationary in the district at all. Perfect. The lock set question is classrooms only, uh, teacher classrooms only, okay. uh, and not uh, non-teacher classrooms, to be, give teachers the, uh, the mm -hmm. ability to lock the classroom from inside the classroom in the event of an emergency versus have to go out in the hallway. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. But all schools will get those? All uh, we're going to do as many schools as we can under sure. the grant, but eventually we would like to get, uh, get to all of our schools, all of our classroom uh, where, where, t where children are located. Yeah, yeah, very good. Thank you. Uh, quick question on that, too. Um, maybe my lack of confidence in the angelic behavior of some of our students, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking about, um, you know, a student joking and locking that from the inside. You know, maybe there's a fight or something they want to be funny in. I don't know, I'm just wondering how emergency piece for us to get in. I'm assuming there's a, a, a general these are double-sided keys. We did we did look at all devices. We you can't use a deadbolt inside a classroom lock. So and the emergency button that would lock the doors. We did look at that, and we elected not to do that and go to the two-sided key. But the the thing that we did with the two-sided keys on the key in the interior of the building. For if Dr. Flores is in classroom 101 and he happens to be visiting in classroom 202, his key would allow him to lock 202 from the inside. So the keys are very versatile, uh, but they, but they're they're uh, unique to the outside of the door. So we did take that in consideration so that a student couldn't lock a, a teacher out of a classroom. Mm -hmm. gotcha. right. Thank you. Anything else? Um, what Mr. Johnson's up there? Any other items? All right. Thank you, sir. So yeah, you uh, I guess you want to move along to um, the bond items, um, or well, I guess uh, as far as the general updates and, and whatnot. Um, but I see purchasing with the bond items though. So I guess Mr. Clamparin, you have anything you want to offer on that? Um, no, he, he, Ken, Ken can address the, the bond in general at the end of our. So we just need the approval for the purchasing agenda to get moved to the board tonight. Well, yeah, and no, I guess I was speaking under purchasing agenda. There's some the classroom piece you spoke of. I yeah, know. again, it's just it's just it's just the the last uh, furniture needed for the city high renovation. Okay. Which, um, we are just about done with that. Yeah. And this furniture, we'll order it, and then it'll come this summer. Yeah. So when they come back in the fall, uh, the whole building will be outfitted at that point. Do we have a motion to uh, approve the purchase agenda for the full board? So, support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you. Okay, and then uh, just one donation for approved review and approval this, this month, and that is a uh, headset microphones, battery packs for City High Middle School. Um, one of the parents, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Kincannon, Donated that and value about fifteen hundred dollars. We need your approval for that also. I have a motion to approve the uh, donation. Send that to the full board. So moved. Support. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Thank you. All right. So. Um, as far as any of the uh, updates, reports, yeah, we just, um, I think this is, <laughs> we had the last, at least the last meeting, finance committee canceled because of the snow day. So if you look at your, the financial dashboard that uh, members have been on the committee for a while, it's, it's changed And this, the first conversation or first meeting that Mr. Ross and I had, uh, 
he had some actually some good ideas what he thought might be more beneficial for his eyes as a non-financial person, maybe others. So I built this into a new dashboard report. And just let me go over it just briefly. And, and certainly if, if you have thoughts about whether you like it or don't like it, you know, feel free to email me. I always, like, always want to improve this to make it more readable to the, to the average um, person, if you will. So at the very top under the, the title you'll see, I've, I've got we're eight months into the fiscal year. So we're about 67% into our fiscal year. July through June is our fiscal year. September through um, May, essentially, is our is our um, school year. And so the the new look of the of the report, the first column then is is the year to date. So through eight months of 2019. And then that second column there, a percentage of 19, 2019 annual budget. So I just simply took the year to date numbers and divided it by the annual budget, which is in the far right column for 2019. So for example, state aid, you'll you see we've received about 43% of the annual budget through um, eight months, even though we're 67% through the year. But I will tell you, state aid in this particular situation, our current year state aid does not begin until October, and then it actually goes through, I think, our last payments in, in August. And that's true all the way down through both the revenue and the expenditure accounts. So you go down to the expenditure, the first column here, administrative leadership. You can see we're about 58% of our annual budget, being 67% into the year. So it just gives you some sense of where we stand. Uh, and again, we don't, we don't incur both revenue and expenditures on a, on a constant basis throughout the year. So it's not going to be 67%. Um, it's just by coincidence, it might be. Um, the third column then is, is last year's, where we stood a year ago through eight months. And then that next column to the right, variance from prior years, that's simply the year-to-date 2018 compared to year-to-date 2019. So again, the state aid line, as you can see, we received to date about $4.7 million less at this point than we did a year ago. See that the variance is all the way down through both the revenue and expenditure. And as I mentioned, the last column to the right is the annual budget, in this case, the amended after Amendment 1, which was passed back in uh, February uh, for the year. Uh, down to the bottom, just to complete this, and I'll think can answer any questions. The balance sheet information that's virtually unchanged from what you saw before. We've got cash and investments, our bonded debt. Compare both 2019, 2018. The general fund balance percent um, year to date. And then to the far right, you'll see their projected fund balance. That's based on our budgeted fund balance. And so we were budgeted to come out about 7% by the end of the year if, if budget holds true to form. And then below that balance sheet is the capital expenditure information. The first line capital expenditures is, is really our non-bond capital expenditures, which used to be mostly sinking fund. We spent most of that, so now it's just some, some uh, smaller amounts uh, that we may have to spend during the year. And then the bond-related capital expenditures, that's year-to-date, that second line there for both 2019 and then over 2018. And then the grand total there is what we spent uh, since we started spending bonds. So through February, we've spent about 65 million of the 87 million dollars that uh, we issued back in 2016. And then the bottom there, just some enrollment information. Again, that's just at a point in time, the last school day of the month, just for comparison purposes. It is not a blended count. It is not, it's actually a head count, it's not even an FTE count, it's a head count, just to give you some sense where we stand. Um, and so that's the new look of the dashboard report. Again, it uh, hopefully provides some, a snapshot in one page, some, some relevant information. We're, we're tracking through eight months, uh, much as we would expect to track at this point in time. Um, you know, generally at about this point in time, we, put out uh, notices to the building saying, you know, we've got about a month and a half, two months of school left. 
should be a lot of expenditures left that you, you have. We remind them don't buy supplies that you want to carry over to next year. Um, you know, we, we look at each budget year as, as it stands. So if you need some more supplies to get you through, through the end of this current year, that's fine. But beyond that, don't buy for next year. That'll, that'll happen in, in the next school year. So uh, any questions, comments on, on this dashboard report? And again, behind that's all the detail information. We can only provide for those that like to look at some of the detail. No? Um, one elementary question for me, though, sure. just um, mm -hmm. uh, the parentheses and stuff sometimes just kind of throw me, so on the expenditure side at least. So just as an example, if, I look at, if I'm looking at expenditures, expenditures, the third line being other administration, mm -hmm. and the variance from prior year is um, 23087. In this case, that means we've expended 23,000 more or 23,000 less? 23,000 less. Okay. Yeah. Brackets just, always is, is yep. less. Yeah, just, yeah. Yep. yeah, exactly. All right. Just wanted to yep. nope. be certain. Thank you. Good question. Um, all right. Well, no other questions about that. Okay. So, all right. Thank you. Okay. We'll talk about warm, <laughs> warm, safe, and dry briefly and then bond. Uh, warm, safe, and dry, we've got roughly 300,000 remaining. There's no time limit on when to spend <coughs> it. We've been setting that aside for emergencies and we're starting to have some. Uh, this winter took its toll on the East Leonard roof. So I've told Principal Rusticus, we, as soon as we can get up and weather allows us to do a proper inspection, we'll determine the extent of what we're gonna do up to and in, in, it may include replacement of the entire roof. We'll, we'll determine that. But that's an example of what we'll spend warm, safe and dry on. And we'll get that done this summer, so. Um, it's just been a rough winter on certain buildings and certain items. So. Um, and we'll, the rest will just hang on to it till we have an emergency that we need to deal with on the spot. Bond updates. Uh, city is moving along quite well. Uh, over spring break, they're going to take down the temporary hallway barricades. Or the, and they're going to put up temporary hallway barricades. They're going to take down the temporary walls and put up a temporary barricade that can move so they can finish that end of the hallway. Uh, we still have to keep students out of certain areas, uh, but it's starting to come together. Um, we don't intend to move into the remaining finished classrooms until this summer. <coughs> Otherwise, it would be a couple moves. We'd be moving old furniture and then taking out and putting new furniture in. We met with uh, Principal Huppert this morning and his team and went over the, that. We've got some things to work out there to make sure everything's finished up. We've asked the staff to give us their their punch list, what their, don't hold back if something's not working, if a room's not heating properly, let us know so we can get it taken care of. But that one's coming along uh, quite well. Uh, Southwest High School, uh, they've started excavation, so that's underway. Um, uh, so far, so good. I mean, we do have some uh, low level contaminated soils there that have to be. Uh, manifested out, but uh, nothing we can't handle. It's, it's pretty routine stuff. Uh, but our goal is uh, open for school August 1, 2020. Um, Ottawa, we had bid Ottawa a couple of weeks ago. We had five categories that we didn't get enough bids in to open. So we rebid masonry a week ago and got that and we rebid the other four today we now have all bids in all categories we need to review them and um, we will have a recommendation in before the end of the week and then it will just go to the next available board meeting whenever that is um, we need to look at the budget um, ottawa has been a budget challenge from day one and make sure that we have a proper recommendation of what we're going to do there uh, without skimping on anything. I don't want to cut them short either. Um, and we need to get going. The, a lot of Ottawa timing isn't critical except for the gym. We have to uh, refurbish the gym. We have a window. We can start essentially now, but we have to be open in early November for winter sports season. So that, that's fixed on us. Um, but 
uh, other than the other stuff really shouldn't matter if we're, we move it a few weeks one way or the other. Union design is coming along and we intend to take that, go out to bids in May or June with a fall start. Um, those are the main ones we have going on right now. Uh, and I'll answer any questions you might have. Are there any questions? Did we, forgive me if I've missed this, are we doing a groundbreaking ceremony for Southwest Community Campus? I may not know that, or did we do Well, that? typically we wait till it's a little yeah, nicer a little prettier, to go out. Yeah, uh -huh. very good. Some of us are wimps that way. Just want to make sure I didn't miss it. Yeah. <laughs> very well, good. I'll, I'll, I'm sure it's on John's right Yeah, I'm sure it's in. All right, thank you. And then of that, I believe the final dedication of city won't, will be when school resumes in the fall. Perfect. All right. Thank you for the bond update. Uh, Dream fund report? Yeah, uh, included in your packet, you may recall uh, the new, this dream fund for the, for the community foundation with these small grants that the West Side schools can apply for a part of the part of the Challenge Scholars and we agreed that anything between twenty five hundred and ninety nine ninety nine process we could do internally, but we'd report those to the Finance Committee of the Board on, an, on a monthly basis. So since last month, there's been one $5,000 grant that was processed and approved for um, Union High School. Um, and you can see that there as part of your, uh, part of your uh, packet. Uh, Mr. Fowler is a teacher at Union that applied for it, and that's been received. Just as a point of reminder, um, uh, these funds, um, uh, I know they're not general dollars. What was the funding source for the Dream Fund in general? That's, again, that's Community Foundation. It's, it's, it's a yeah. allocation of this Challenge Scholar yes, dollars. Yes. So All right, 165000 in total. So. Thank you. Do we know how much has been awarded? Uh, I don't have it in front of me. It's, it's in the neighborhood of, it was like $90,000, I think. So oh, already 90 yeah. of them. Yeah. Wow, okay. And actually, I th probably next meeting we'll have, there's maybe three or four uh, grants in process in excess of $10,000, okay. which will need to come to you. So by uh, the next month or so, it may be up, be up closer to one hundred and twenty or 30000 so. So additional education on that, um, was uh, as far as the community foundation is concerned, <coughs> is that considered to be an uh, uh, annual sort of allocation to some degree? Uh, don't, don't know the answer to that. The, the, the 165000 was just for this first year. Uh, I think they were going to see how it went and uh, decide what's going to happen for the next year, yeah. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, then, uh, and uh, the bond timing update, was that something you... Yeah, let me just about? give you an update on, on that. As we've talked before, we're in, the, we're in the process of planning to issue our second tranche of $175 million. Uh, it's been active the last couple of weeks in terms of uh, preparing the preliminary offering statement that goes to potential investors and to our underwriters. And other parties, we've had a couple of, of calls to get that all set between underwriters, financial advisors, myself, and the attorneys. Um, we have, and I just got an updated draft this afternoon. I haven't looked at it in detail yet. Well, last Wednesday, we had a bond rating call with Moody's out of Chicago. They will be rating <coughs> bonds as they had before. Um, we currently have a AA2 rating or actually the bonds we issued are at that when the district is, is, is at such. Uh, well, they hope to have that rating back to us by April 5th. Depending on what that looks like, we may or may, we may or may not then decide to also buy bond insurance to enhance the credit of, of the issue and makes it more sellable at a lower interest rate for us. And we actually insured the first tranche that we issued that sold very nicely. We intend right now to go to market on April 17th, and uh, then we will actually close on the sale and receive our funds around May 
14th at this point in time. So that is the current timing of the second tranche of bonds. And certainly if you have retirement accounts that invest in mutual funds, tell your financial advisor to be on the lookout for Grand Rapids school bonds that they can put in the portfolio, you can help us out, so. Um, questions on that? Okay. The other, th other item I'll give you an update on is this con Connecting Children to Nature initiative, which is, was funded initially with a grant from the Weggy Foundation last fall, and we had it approved, and, it was in, and it's going to fund um, these environmental playgrounds, right, Ken? It's, it's twofold. Uh, the first one's going in at Burton. Part of it's on, on the Burton School side. Part of it's on the adjacent city park. Uh, it's nature play, and also will include things like outdoor classroom. Um, so there, there's there's a learning piece to it, and then the next set will be that are in the planning are around Buchanan. Uh, that's got limitations, but it will include an outdoor classroom, and then um, Sigsby and Ken O'Shea and Ken O'Shea. Yeah. And so the, the the first project is is Bert. That's it's done in in. Um, cooperation with the city. City's also thrown in some parks and rec money to, to fund this whole thing. So, and they actually will hold the construction contract uh, for that that burden since most of the construction's on, on their property. Uh, we met with them, we're, we actually have regular meetings with them. We met with them a couple weeks ago. Their plan is to, uh, and, and, and Ken has reviewed and signed off on the design work for that, but they plan to bring the bids to their board, I believe, on early April. And then uh, the plan is to begin construction shortly thereafter, in late April, early May, with a September completion and dedication date at this point in time. So that, and then, um, as, as Ken mentioned, we're in the planning stages of the other projects that'll take place um, ongoing for the next couple of years here. And the caveat on the Burton site was that everything on our side be done before school starts yeah. so that our our students aren't intermixing with any remaining construction yeah the the, the funds were were granted to us there are dollars so we have responsible fiduciary responsibility and reporting uh, responsibilities so work with the city uh, the way it's going to work we have an arrangement with them, a little letter of agreement that you know they submit to us the the contractor invoices and then we will uh, cut a check to them. Uh, we also ensured that their procurement policies were consistent with ours, which as you can imagine they are. And, uh, and again, we have um, uh, ability to review the, the plans and drawings and approve those also before. So it's a good, again, a very uh, cooperative arrangement with the city, much like we had with the, uh, procuring the museum high school building uh, way back four years ago now that they owned at the time and, and uh, got it back from them with, and we, gave, we gave them some land too also. So uh, it's a good relationship with them. And the fact they can provide some additional millage dollars enhances the project too for, for both parties, which is great, so. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, three policy, uh, we have none for the policy matter and four other. Um, anything else though other than what we discussed before. All right, good. Any questions from anyone? All right, well, I guess, um, oh, I guess one other thing, uh, with the confusion schedule-wise, we are planning to go back to our regularly scheduled rotation. Of, um, and I guess, Cindy, if, um, I know we have a, a various um, calendar dates. I know Julie was working on figuring out what's going on with the uh, calendar notices. I know I have some for Tuesdays randomly. Um, so I don't know if maybe you can connect with Julie, see if there's any, been any resolution in that regard. And then I guess resend the uh, uh, finance appointments uh, back to 4.30 in our regular rotation. That would be helpful, yeah. sure. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we're adjourned. Thank you. Great. Thank you.